I covered Kyle Kalinske talking to the Vanguard boys about the viability of voting third party. And okay, I guess in fairness, I was quite mean to the Vanguard boys. So I don't, I, I can't necessarily blame them for <laughs> what's the vibe. Skip to five minutes in. If you're in a safe state, because um, you don't want to beat out the opposition by one vote. You need overwhelming uh, uh, victories against them because that mobilizes the party and it indicates people's like broader rejection of it. You do not want a 51 versus 49% fascism. That's not. Yeah, that would be a fucking swing state, idiot. I'm talking about safe states. In other words, the states that don't go 49, 51. Um, but just. I don't want a 70, 30 it either. I want a 99, one it. I want a 100 zero it. Draw man in the argument from the very, very top. The problem with the logic of like, you can vote for your crank worthless third party candidates if you want to because you're in like a safe red or safe blue state. The problem with that is that states don't always stay safe red or safe blue. Florida was considered a blue state and then it's, well, wait, it's not a blue state? That was so long ago. It was recently considered a swing state and now it's a red state, you know? And, and that's because Republicans who are dogmatic and unflinchingly devoted to their party, uh, you know, continue to run out there and press those votes, even when it feels futile. And things can change. But when you when you give people the idea of like, oh, no, sorry, your state's already red. You can vote forever you want. There's no pressure. Well, then it's not, you know, it, it might not be red forever if you fight for it. And, and likewise with blue states, you don't want them to shift over. Yeah. Also, Florida. Yeah, it now is a solidly red state, but it used to be a swing state. So. It's not really the same thing. Like, while it was a swing state, yeah. Okay, I but if it went from a swing state to a red state, then it, it, it reasons to assume that it could be made from a red state to a swing state, but that would only be if you keep voting blue, even though the state is red. Like, if it can go from a swing state to a red state, you can push back on that, but not if you just seed the moment they seem to win. My logic would be, because of the fact that it's going to go red, almost 99 to 100% chance it's going to go red. If you're someone that lives in Florida that's considering voting for Joe Biden, hey, you might as well vote for fucking Cornell West. No, no, because then it will stay red literally forever. And any time for any reason that any state goes red, you cede it permanently to the right because the right's smart enough to continue voting for viable candidates. Like, blue states creep towards the center because, oh, it's a blue state. No point in voting blue. It's already going to go blue. And then they become swing states, and it's like, oh, now we're going to vote. But then if they ever shift over to the red, it's like, ah, no point in voting blue. You know, it's already gone red. And then, like, this is ridiculous. This is, like, come on, think for a second. Come on. Think for a moment about the consequences of these ideas. Because guess what? If you vote for jo Joe Biden, you're throwing your vote away. No, the you're not. Voting for Joe Biden in Florida and voting for Cornell West in Florida are not the same votes because Cornell West and the Green Party will never be a potential uh, swing state contender in Florida, but Joe Biden would, the Democrats would, and have been. I don't know. This is just the anarcho-Bidenism that we've always come to expect from a guy like Vosh. Where That's true. It's just like, you know what? We're already defeated. Let's just roll over and vote for the Democrats. And it's like, you're no, that's your argument. We're already defeated in in red states. So we might as well just roll over and virtue signal with 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 protest votes to candidates that can do nothing that are mathematically incapable of doing anything. It's not a matter of we're defeated. I'm not defeated when I vote for Biden. That's the best possible option. I'm engaging in a legitimate system for preventing fascist takeovers and state and national levels. It's not like the dream world that I want to be in where I can snap my fingers and instantly fix everything by making socialism happen, but it's the world that I live in. And that's fine. Nobody gets to exist in the world they want to live in. You have to build it, you know? You're not at all interested in changing anything. You're not at all interested in thinking outside of the box. You're not, I'm sorry, you're not thinking outside of the box by slamming your head against a wall. Changing anything. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're definitely going to change something with your Cornell West vote. Come on, dude. Stop, stop pretending that it's a matter of pragmatism to vote third party. It's a virtue signal. Come on. So they'll think like, oh, well, OK, maybe I'll acknowledge it's better for Joe Biden to win than for Trump to win. But like that doesn't really speak to me. That's not me. I'm not a Biden voter. That's not who me, that's not who I am. That's not what, what, what I that's that's not what represents me. You know, I'm a Cornell West voter. Well, I don't give a shit what you are. I give a shit what the outcome of these elections are. And you're not going to get good outcomes if you throw your votes away. Even in states that are already decidedly red, it's just there's no point. Third parties are, are, are just not a thing. They're not real. They're fake. Don't listen to them. Hello, well, this is such good advice. This is such hopeful advice for the future. I'm actually feeling really inspired and motivated to participate in politics right now. Thank you. Okay.
I know that this is a joke, but like, if your participation in politics hinges on me delusionally selling you the idea that third parties are a viable way out of the party duopoly, then you're basically saying you don't care about what happens and you don't care about reality. You care about a narrative where you get to feel like a special hero for beating back the tide of of the the normies and their political engagement. I don't you, like. It's always this like, well, defeat isn't that. Defeat isn't that. I don't care whether or not my narrative is understood as a hopeful or defeatist one. What I care about is the path to victory. And as long as we're on that path, I'm going to be happy about it. When we stray from that path, I'm going to be unhappy about it. I don't care how dirty that path is. I don't care whether or not it involves voting for Joe Biden or become a DNC shill. If the outcome of this entire messy process is more power for us, for socialists or for the working class or for progressives or whatever else, to victory, then that, that's what I care about. You know, If, if, if that means being uh, patient uh, for a while, if that means understanding my relative weakness and lying in wait then fine i i just I, I don't care i don't think it's defeatist you know people have been following your fucking advice for years vosh oh just keep voting blue eventually we'll banish the fascists for good right i don't say that i just say it's better than the red winning that's it it's not it's not complicated by the way remember when the red won in 2016 then we got three republican supreme court justices and now all the fabric and everything institutional about this country even the like legislative boundaries that protected people are being eroded like rapidly that's cool that's so great i love that you know it's almost like it's almost like the process of building up a bulwark against fascism isn't a super cool and rewarding one where you get to feel like a hero and you vanquish the fascists with a single fell vote. It's almost like the process of protecting your society against fascism is multifaceted. And that making sure the non-fascist candidates win is just the, to be clear, bare fucking minimum that I should not even have to ask you to do. It's the, the, the most basic protection and that protection eroded for one presidency. We got three Republican Supreme Court justices, and now everything's up on the table. It doesn't fix the problem. It just gives us time. Um, but if only Jill Stein actually hadn't run, you man, she cost him Pennsylvania. Or cost her Pennsylvania. <laughs> right. So, yeah, the people followed Vosh's advice in 2016. We got fascism. People what is... What? How? What? If more people had followed my advice, first of all, I wasn't even a streamer back in 2016. Second of all, if more people had followed my advice, Hillary would have won. What? Wait, what is that? Wait, the the strategy of voting for Hillary Clinton is what cost Hillary Clinton the election? I don't understand. I just, I don't understand. This this is flailing. It's it's inept flailing, an inability to engage with the ideas, the arms wave, where the wacky inflatable tube man you see outside of car dealerships. What 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 is this? Now, now, you know, not only does voting blue not break the corporate duopoly, it also leads to red winning. Now, come on, come on. Push it back one more time, one more time, uh, which is... Uh yes, yes, keep pushing it back. Yes, what, what do you... Wait, what do you mean? Yes, if, if uh, the tide of fascism is bearing down on you, yes, you do keep pushing it back one more time. Unto eternity, forever. Yes, you keep doing it every time. It's, guys, it's, you're casting your vote once every four years, okay? Can we please stop pretending that you're, like, being signed up for an 18-hour shift at the, the, the coal mine for, for the rest of your life? Come on, seriously, yes, yes, that is what you do. You, you, they have to lose no matter what, no matter which one of us wins, they lose. That is the, the, the necessary outcome. The difference between a Bernie Sanders or a Cornell West presidency and a Biden presidency is infinitesimally small when compared to the difference between a presidency run by us and a presidency run by them. It, it's it, the, the, they need to lose. Oh yes. Always. I'm sorry if it requires work. I'm sorry if it's not always super heroic and you don't always get to be the big special boy. If you want to blame any voters, blame the ones that stay home. Blame the like 50% of the country that doesn't even fucking bother to get out of the bed and go vote. I will. Why are you blaming people I do. that did? I do. Why are you blaming the people that did decide to go to the fucking polls and cast their vote? Those are the people that actually are participating in our democracy. Um, what about the people that stay home? Not that they should be blamed. Obviously, people have no, they reason to have apathy yeah. towards electoralism. But if you're going to blame it, they're wrong. Their apathy is incorrect. There is a meaningful difference in the quality of their lives between a Republican and Democrat victory. They're wrong. They're wrong. And I'll blame them for it. Yeah. Like, at least our vote will have a purpose, and his purpose will be oh, a fucking... Oh, see, that's it. That's the, it's the narrative they care about. The purpose, you know. Ah, uh, my vote may do nothing, but at least it's the revolutionary's vote. Yeah, it's the cope table. It's the baby's table. You get to sit in the baby seat with the babies. Ah... Uh, you know, we may not be at the grown-ups table where they're actually doing politics, but... <sighs> if more non-voters who are so, you know, depressed and apathetic about electoralism, for good reason, that they just stay home, because, again, it doesn't really matter who they cast their vote for, if more of those people realize that, hey, actually, 
there is a way to vote that will have meaning. And even though, yeah, it's not going to make Cornell less president, at least I can be contributing to a larger, bigger project, something that perhaps within my lifetime. Yeah, well, at least at least, you know, it may not do anything or achieve any goal, but at least I feel, oh, it's feeling politics. Oh, my God. I, it's just it's incredible the cognitive dissonance, dissonance necessary to impugn voting in a safe blue or red state because it's meaningless, but then to argue for voting for a third party, even though they know he won't become president because it's meaningful because question mark, question mark, question mark. Anyway, anyway, this segment is dragged on for so long. Let's conclude it. All right. Well, that was um, exactly as productive as I imagined it would be.